I just wanted to tell the story of, of how I came across Balanced View and, and how that's unfolded for me. And um, it was something that I stumbled across, probably like most of you. I had a friend that was listening to talks and um, I ended up listen, listening to these talks with a friend. I wasn't, I didn't think I was looking for anything. I was generally quite happy. And, um, but this friend was playing, <coughs> playing these talks and I, I heard these things on these talks that were just not quite like anything I'd ever heard before. Even though the things that I were hear, was hearing sounded incredibly familiar. It was like I'd hear these things on these talks. I'm like, I know that. I know that. That's, that's just so obvious. But I've never actually heard it stated quite like that before. And um, at the time, I really considered myself to be um, a free spirit and a loner, and I was on my own spiritual path. And um, I read lots of books and listened to different people's ideas and talks about the nature of reality and the nature of mind. And um, it had been something that had always interested me. I'd, I'd studied philosophy when I was at university. And um, I remember one of the courses that we did there was uh, ethics and looking at the different ethical beliefs that people had around the world. And there were certain things to me that just seemed really obvious, you know, like, you know, you obviously you shouldn't kill somebody. But then when we looked at the way that human society is actually operating, <coughs> and we look at the way that governments take decisions, and the way that we behave, and the way that the people around us behave, and there seemed to be many times when it is actually acceptable to kill people. I mean, look at all the wars that are going on that many people think are right, and, you know, whether we agree with them or not, this is the way that human society is actually living. And um, so we looked in ethics and there wasn't a single rule or law that could be applied universally throughout human society. You know, there are always exceptions where, you know, if somebody was threatening the people that I love, then would that be acceptable then to use, you know, to use violence and use possibly fatal violence then? You know, all of these exceptions and it began to get very complicated. And then when I looked at my own life and began to look at my own life and saw that the violence that I was actually enacting, um, and I wasn't killing people, but as I listened to more of these talks, it became clear that, um, first of all, there was this violence I was exhibiting towards myself, and that nobody was more violent towards me than I was. I was a very harsh critic of everything that I said, everything that I did, everything that I didn't say, and everything that I didn't do. I mean, that's really harsh. <laughs> and not only was I critical over what I did, but I was critical over what I didn't do. It was like, you know, it's a no-win situation. <laughs> but that seemed to me to be the way that I needed to live my life. You know, how else was I going to know what to do? And so I listened to more and more of these talks, and there seemed to be a very clear instruction and a very clear language that was being used that was just very direct. And it was this directness of this language that was like being struck by these lightning bolts. So I'd be off in my own world thinking about this and that and what I should have done and what I shouldn't have done. And suddenly on this talk there'd be this statement like um, something along the lines of, all thoughts, emotions and sensations are like a rainbow appearing in space. I'd be like, bloody hell, you know. <laughs> I, I'd never thought about it like that, but that's, that, that's just, it's obvious. That's so obvious. And so, I listened to more and more of these talks, and, um, and this friend started taking me to these open meetings. I was like, an open meeting? What's that? <laughs> you know, that sounds awful. You know? <laughs> And um, so I, I was like, all right, yeah, yeah, I'll come. And, um, and I sat at the back, you know, just like, oh, what is this? You know, I just want to be on the beach. Or, um, but it was amazing. There was all this stuff going on as I was sat in the open meeting, all of these thoughts and emotions and physical sensations. And yet at the same time, 
there was this recognition of this openness, of this sense of okayness. And at the beginning, this, this recognition of this sense of openness and okayness was just really, um, it was so brief, the moments were really short, that they were almost gone before I, I could recognize that they were there. But at the same time, it was, it, it was undeniable, because it was my own direct experience. All of these incredible things I'd heard about the nature of reality and the nature of mind, all of these amazing books that I'd read, for the first time in my life, this was something that I could see was an education that I was being introduced to. So before these seemingly spontaneous recognitions of you know, the interconnected nature of everything, you know, the, the beautiful oneness of existence, were these experiences that I tried to recreate, or these insights that I tried to hold on to, always with complete failure. And that was really frustrating because I knew that there was something more than the conventional description as to what was going on. I knew it. And I absolutely was certain of it. It had been my experience. But how to bring that into my everyday lived experience? And, and so I kept turning up to these open meetings despite all of this data that just kept raging even when I was sat at them. It was almost like despite this data I turned up the next day. And then I kept turning up. And this obviousness of this openness, of this intelligence, just continued to increase. Despite what I thought about organizations and groups of people and all, all of these ideas that I had about what I liked and what I didn't like and the trainer, oh God, I definitely don't need a trainer. You know, I, you know why would I need a, someone to tell me what to do? And that was just ridiculous. Um, but very slowly, um, I began to test out the suggestions that were being offered, you know, to take short moments whenever I naturally remembered. And at the beginning, when I was in the open meeting, that was when it was most obvious for me to take this short moment and just allow everything to be as it was. So I did that. And then I began to take short moments in, in other situations as well. And I could see that there was this openness and this ease that was always available. And I knew that because I tested it for myself in different circumstances. I tested it when I was on my own. I tested it when I was feeling happy. I tested it when I was feeling sad. I tested it when I was speaking to someone. It might have looked a bit strange the first time I did that. Mid-conversation, took a short moment. Wow, open intelligence is here too. But to see that it, it was always accessible and I was discovering this for myself in my own experience. And as my confidence grew that this was the case and that here was this way that I could train this up in myself, um, I can remember um, quite early on where suddenly something would disturb me. Often it was somebody else would say something that would really push one of my buttons. You know, something I didn't agree with, a, a, a belief system that wasn't mine or an opinion that I didn't agree with. And there'd be this rush of data and, oh no, open intelligence is gone, it's gone, it's gone. I've got to get home, I'm going to listen to a talk, I've got to listen to a talk, and I'd get back home and put on the talk, and, oh yeah, right, that's it. I know, I can just relax. Oh, that, that's the solution. That's where I can see the immediate benefit for myself of no longer being caught up in this description, in this data stream. And what's more, not only was this benefit felt as a sense of ease, but it was felt as a sense of really clear seeing. So suddenly when I wasn't emphasizing only the descriptions, but was seeing the inseparability of all of these descriptions from this same open intelligence, then I began to see everything clearly. So the insights that came with regards to the conventional knowledge that I had were incredible. But those insights didn't come from me sitting and thinking about them and studying <coughs> philosophy and talking about them. They came from me recognizing again and again that the source of whatever I was thinking, where, whether it was some incredible grand ethical question or whether it was how I was going to relate with the person that had just pissed me off, were to be found in the same intelligence. This was the source of all knowing including conventional wisdom and, and knowledge. I didn't have to get rid of any of that. 
but it became enhanced by recognizing that all of it had its basis in exactly the same place. So I began to listen to the talks more and more because they were so effective. And yet there were still things that totally overwhelmed me, where I just could not allow myself to relax and allow everything to be as it was, no matter how many talks I listened to. But I could see the benefit in many places. So then I decided to test out the trainings itself, the written trainings. You know, and um, again, there was so much data around that. You know, all of these ideas about a written training that's going to be really boring and all of these ideas. And yet I tested it out for myself, regardless of the data that I had. I was open enough to test it out. And when I started participating in these written trainings, then wow! So much became clear that previously had just been kind of vague. That I hadn't been able to allow myself to see it for what it really was. This shining forth of open intelligence. And so I took part in more and more of these written trainings and the sense of stability, the sense of empowerment, the sense of really knowing what, what the hell was going on just continued to increase. And then there was the trainer that was suggested again and again and a relationship that I'd really avoided for a long time. And I began to test that out. You know, I sent my first email to my trainer you know, and it was like agony pressing the send button. It's like, oh no, ah, all right, I've sent it now. I can't do anything about it. And, um, and it, it was interesting to test that out again, to see what kind of support would that offer me. And my trainer has given me all kinds of suggestions and all kinds of um, just advice, really, but not the kind of suggestions and the kind of overview that he offers me is an overview and a suggestion that always expands my understanding of what the situation is. Now that hasn't necessarily always been what I wanted to hear. But to allow myself the humility of recognizing in another human being the perfection that I actually want to recognize in myself, for me, has been incredible. And there's been so much pride and arrogance and you know, determination that you know, I can do it on my own. But actually what I see now is my capacity to ask for help and my determination to ask for help in clarifying the nature of my own mind is a sign of my strength and my stability, not a sign of my weakness. Because I'm not this closed system that has to do everything on my own. I'm an open networked intelligence, connected intimately with everyone and everything. So why on earth wouldn't I take advantage of the support that's offered? Why would I make it difficult for myself? Why not make it easy? I had always wanted an easy life. I'd never wanted my life to be difficult, ever. And yet it had become this struggle, me struggling with all of my data, with all of my experiences, my crazy thoughts, my raging emotions. What do I do with them? How do I manage this one? To see that I can relax and extract this power of complete benefit from all of them, simply by relying on this support network, regardless of my data about how that looks, how it should feel, what I should think about it. I look at the results. That's what's important for me. Does this work? Does the Four Mainstays result in increasing mental and emotional stability? Does it allow me ever-increasing insight into the nature of reality? Does it allow me to respond with warmth and openness and a spontaneity that previously I had no idea was even possible? Does it do that? These are the important questions to ask, not whether I think my relationship with my trainer should look like this or look like that. Not, is this something that agrees with my ideas I have about how organizations should look. But does it actually work? That's a really important question to ask yourself and to be open enough to test out. And you can test that just by showing up, just by taking short moments, just by testing out some of the written trainings.